All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Chasing Edges podcast. We've got our first repeat guest, Dr. Eric Serrano. Um, we're doing a little bit of Q&A this time, mostly questions from everybody out there. So hopefully your uh, question gets answered. But, Doc, thanks for joining us again. <laughs> no problem. I can move the mic up a little bit, I think. Just, I just want to make sure we can hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we're good. Um, no, we got a bunch of great responses from like the last podcast. Obviously, it's like a two-hour saga, so like it was it was cool to get everybody. Like a lot of people have heard of you, but never like one heard you talk, <laughs> and so they didn't know what they're getting into there. Then a lot of people um, enlightened and impressed by the the depth of knowledge and like the the range of stuff we covered. Really, so like um, a lot of questions sprung up just immediately after the podcast, and then probably got like another six questions seven questions like when i threw out a q a kind of deal so um we'll go ahead and get uh right into it because most of this stuff bleeds into what we talk about every day as well but um like in general there's some general questions one of the general questions is like good supplements and vitamins for somebody that's like generally active like we we they noted that we talked about d and k last time um but anything that like come like comes to mind or like general vitamins and supplements for an active human okay i i have to say everybody should be in a multivitamin not because what people think of oh you know i eat great food the problems the problems are where you get the food from which right now the quality of the food is very poor so we do not get all the nutrients we need from the foods only so like, the, like the food itself is nutrient deficient and it is it comes from like overcrop soil like all these compounds or gmo things. or things yeah. like that which doesn't have what we need and actually the problem right now is we don't rotate the crops so we take corn and we put corn on that land and over and over which sucks the nutrients on the corn but now some people rotate what they do is they rotate corn they put soybean because high protein the soybean dies there so high protein goes back into the ground then they do either soybean again or for two years and they put the corn on or whatever they're going to do or wheat and that's how they rotate crops which Ah, it's okay because you get different, I would say, sources of nutrients, but it's not the same because the food, the ground is not fer fertilized correctly. Now, one of the most common uh, fertili fertilization techniques is using pig stool or cows or goat stool when you want to do it correctly, which bring nutrients back into the ground, but many people don't practice that. The Amish people, I have a lot of Amish patients and they do practice that nice. they go ahead and we do it too that's why we have those massive sweet potatoes and massive cucumbers right so and to answer your question let me go back to it i think everybody should be in a in general doesn't matter if you're an athlete or a normal person you should be in a multivitamin oh shit keep talking you're good uh, okay <laughs> so uh blooper number two yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to be honest there are d two different types of vitamins and i'm not going to talk about classes of vitamins i'm talking about chemical vitamins meaning they, they are created on a lab almost every vitamin is created on a lab but this artificial vitamin meaning you have the structure similar to the vitamin that it's supposed to be but it's not the same for example so some people go oh, i bought vitamin e okay and it's, it's not working in my skin i get still these pimples on the back of my arm by the way you guys out there look at yourself right now and if you go to the back of your tricep and you feel like those little pimples especially females but males too and you do that and you rub it that's usually a vitamin e or vitamin a deficiency and it's kind of interesting because we say well i'm taking vitamin e is not working well if you go back to the store you're going to see that vitamin e is dl alpha tocopherol which is actually a fake vitamin e it is not it's not vitamin E, it's a chemical. And when you take that, goes to the receptor, it binds the receptor, but it does not do what the vitamin E should do. Because it's putting the key on a lock, it's turning the lock, but it's not opening the door. But it's affecting the cell somehow. Now, when you buy the alpha tocopherol, which is the natural form of the vitamin E, then you got some effects. The only problem is that vitamin E has tocopherols and trocotrienols, which are two are family members of the vitamin E, and there's six total. Uh, which is interesting is we just take the D-alpha tocopherol because it's really cheap. It's four bucks yeah. for a hundred, but that is not the correct vitamin. That's <laughs> going to affect. It makes the margin look better for the company oh, selling it. Yeah. Absolutely, it's better, but it's not. It is bad for your health. So when I'm talking about vitamins, I always want to have what I would call the active forms of the vitamins. 
and not many vitamins out there have the active forms. Actually, the number one sole vitamin, if you, you're you going to go, oh, is this or is this one, is, is one a day, yeah. you know, which is a chemical. That's what they put on the TV, I guess, or whatever, and they bite that. So when the people, or Centrum, actually, Centrum is number one, so which is crazy, but that's the most commercialized vitamin. That's how you know, oh, I take Centrum on one a day, which, by the way, is made by the same pharmaceutical companies. But those vitamins are absolutely fake. They're not like they're supposed to be. Now, if I was going to take vitamins, I'd make sure that I take the active forms of it. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, if you look at almost every protein shake out there, you see vitamin 6. And you go, oh, I get vitamin 6. And it's pyridoxine hydrochloride, which it is a form of a vitamin 6, but it's not the real one. So the active form is called P from Paul 5 P, P5 P. And uh, that's the active form, which actually is kind of also funny because on the fake one, you might need 25, 30 milligrams. On the real one, you need 10 milligrams because it's the active form of it and you don't need as much. So the first recommendation I'm going to tell out there to your listeners is, okay, if I'm going to buy a vitamin supplement, I want to make sure one that has the A, B, C, D, E, and Fs, right? I have the B vitamins, you have the A vitamins, all of them together, but try to buy one that has the active forms of those vitamins. There are multiple companies out there, and, and I'm not selling anything here. I just want to bring it up. Uh, for example, Zymogen Company has a good one. Pure Encapsulation has an excellent one. Um, I have my own. It's called Core Essentials, and I'm working with a company called um, Muscle Fees, and I'm putting one that is going to be a little bit different than most of the vitamins out there. Core Essentials has all the vitamins, all the active forms of all the vitamins, but also have like mushrooms, they have vegetables, they have fruits on it. The the core essentials, that's a polyquin performance yeah, product. Yeah, that's a polyquin yeah. performance okay. product. And and actually, I'm working with another group, like I said, a muscle fix, and I'm trying to create one that is going to be absolutely, absolutely the best active forms of everything. And even including mushrooms in it, and I'm going to have the active form of the mushrooms. Now, if you want to go buy a cheaper one, I'm sure they're out there. Also, I also want to add, when you take a multivitamin that has chemical compounds on it you take two capsules or two tablets or whatever and you have what supposedly you have 100 percent of all of them well be aware like for example core essential you need six capsules yeah because there's so many ingredients in there and so many things that take up space that's why you have to take too many to make it correctly and that's why you have to be aware of all those when you can take all your vitamins in one capsule Trust me, you're not getting all your vitamins. Yeah, just a yeah, that's a great <laughs> education point. But uh, so you're saying like you have the six pills, like you can still take those at one time, or you're saying that I will always take vitamins with your food and all at one time. Okay, yeah. Then so, um, the, but the quantities in the multivitamin might be two hundred percent or three hundred percent just to get you to one hundred percent. Yes. That, okay. I got yes, you. and Good. that's why you have to be very careful. Because now we're actually working with the with the specific natural active forms, and the quantity has to be a little larger than the ones that you get. Or you get 200 milligrams, but you're not getting the right thing. So be aware of that. Now, because it's a chemical, that means, oh, this one is 20 times stronger than the real one, but it doesn't work like the real one. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be aware of that. Now, another thing is uh, most vitamins are based on the RDA, or recommended daily allowance, which... I know people are going to be listening to this is a pile of bullshit, but it's, it's from the 1930s. Oh, yeah, we're going to find out how much vitamin you need by saying when you're dying, oh, yeah, that's how much you need, which is a baloney type of measurement. It hasn't changed in years, and you do not want to follow that. Now, I have three stages on your body, um, depletion, deficiency, and dysfunction. So I call it a triple D. So let me, let me repeat that, depletion, deficient, deficiency, and dysfunction. So when I'm going to see a client or a patient, I go ahead, okay, where, where is this patient? Total dysfunction? And when I say dysfunction, I mean then muscle pain, body aches, you know, already have broken down on getting the COVID virus or something is happening to me. That patient usually is in dysfunction state. So not that patient is not in depletion state. It's in dysfunction state. It's in depletion and deficient state. So I got a ump my dosages above the RDA above what standard, the RDA yeah. standards because I gotta repair help you repair. Yeah. So be aware of those things. I will I will always use a multivitamin always and I will always take it with food and I always try to do it in the morning. Why in the morning? 
because some of the multivitamins are vitamin D, which is the sunlight vitamin. Yeah. You don't want to take that at night because it's a sunlight vitamin. Yeah. Um, some people say take it, take take vitamin D at night. Well, when do you make vitamin D? When the sun hits it. Yeah. So I wouldn't take that at night. That's yeah, for my sure. Own, only, logic, very logical. Yes, but logic doesn't always. No, but it's it's like so like even like vitamin D deficiency. Yes, you can supplement it now with the D three and the K two, and then like we'll we'll get into the magnesium concept a little later. But like even with like the setting your circadian rhythm with light on the eyes, like that specific sunlight. That is correct. People think they're getting it when like they're <laughs> um, his dogs bumping around, but uh, like when they're looking through the windows, no, it get like it gets blocked by the window. So like these things are just like some people just aren't aware of. So like that's why this conversation I think is really cool. <laughs> well, most people think if I go out there for ten minutes and I get sunlight, I'm okay. Well. The problem is that the research shows to get what you need in one day, you need to go out between 11 and 1 p.m. And 99% of the people are either on lunchtime inside, you know, yeah. gossiping or playing on a computer and not on the sunlight. And I don't see that many people outside on the sunlight. So. No, not even close, especially from 11 to 1. Like modern society is not built, us, built for us to succeed as like an optimal performing human. It's really no. not. Um, but like that concept, uh, we took me and my buddy Harvey talked with Michael Easter, wrote this book, Comfort Crisis, great book. But he said that 93% of like Americans days is spent inside. And that's crazy when you think about it. 93% so dominant. We, we were meant to be outside, to be honest. That's what people that actually are on the sunlight, they are not depressed. They feel better. They're more energetic. They have less pain. So... And it makes sense why you want to go by the beach. Well, yes, you see the girls on the bikini and all that stuff, and you jump on the water, but the sunlight makes you feel way better. It makes you feel like you're alive. So darkness is the, is a way to go, hey, you got to go to bed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's what, like, the absence of sunlight, which is how life's supposed to be lived. You're not supposed to go inside and have overhead lights that mimic like 11 to 1 sunlight and like all these things affect your circadian rhythm so like until you really are absence of light sunlight in general like that's when melatonin starts producing so like now like you can dose the hell out of well, melatonin yeah i'm going to correct brian on a statement he said absence absence of light no is dark is the absence of light yeah okay be aware of that there's no absence of light darkness is the absence of light in the sense you create darkness because the light is not there but light is never absent it's always there it's just that you're aware of it now I wanna interesting i just want to tell you that because sunlight is always there never goes away so be aware of that now i want to say one more point i have a lot of amish patients and it's interesting because i stay with them to see what they will do and you know we got there i remember going i've been there during the summer i've been there during the winter and during the summer it's all work 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 i mean they get up at the crack of dawn and they're working on the crops and they're working on everything they're doing and it's 8 30 at night here it's still sunlight well they're working outside yeah now winter comes i stay there one winter and f five o'clock you know it gets dark here yeah there's no freaking electrical power yeah you know the the heater form is a stove with wood in it they turn it on, they light it up, and they have pipes, and that, you know, makes the, the freaking yeah, house warm, yeah. warm, but that's it. And then the rest of the, of the lights are candles, Yeah, which was amazing. It was, you know, it's kind of funny because I say, ah, sometimes I can sleep, blah, 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 blah. Dude, I sat on a chair at freaking 545, which we ate dinner like at 5, you know? Yeah. I sat there, it took me, to, and I was in a rocking chair. Yeah. By the time I woke up, it was... 11 o'clock at night yeah and you know so i you did passed out, yeah i passed out and then not only that i'm looking at my watch because it's the only electrical stuff that i have and i go oh crap i went to bed yeah but like the so candles and fire they're low blue light they're higher There's red not, light concept. Yeah, yeah absolutely so i was asleep and i went to bed then still and i slept of course i only slept until four yeah which by the way the sunlight then you know starts to come out which that's when they wake up and stuff like that it's very interesting how how we have changed how are, how are the health um, system like? Are, are they le like Amish relatively healthy well, because they're pretty in tune the, with nature? They are yes and no. The problem that has happened is because they have kept the group so tight knit. There's no outside genetical coming in. Okay. And and to survive in a society, and this statement might be pure um, wrong, but you have to mix. You have to bring new genetic pool. I need to improve quote unquote the race. Where you start going for cousins and stuff like that, then things happen a little bit. 
the problem is that with the society of the Amish, the two Amish people that stay Amish, yes, they're pretty healthy. But now they're integrating the pie, the the pies, the sugars, yeah. the things that were not there. Now they're integrating it. Now the different sects of the Amish, and it doesn't matter right now. But most of the Amish people, yes, real Amish are pretty healthy because they work all day. You know, they're hunting. Yeah, they're doing something physical. Which were not, yeah. Which uh, which, which favors the blue collar work and those and just uh, like again, you rest, you rust. If you're really yes. just sitting behind a computer all day, you're it's, susceptible it, to the, like the the hazards of uh, stagnation. Yeah, absolutely, you're not but, doing anything. You're not, you're going to be nothing. Yeah, which uh, but to, to wind it back, so to back to like supplement and vitamin recommendations. So like we have the multi, and you wanted to have A, B, C, D, K. Okay, so so great question. Okay, so in general, for just general health. Just take a multivitamin. Now, that doesn't treat deficiencies. That just treats depletion, okay? Now, when I get to deficiency, that's why then you want to have A, D, and K. Then you have specific cases. For example, a person that has the gold bladder removed, that person has to be in extra fat soluble vitamins. Why? Because now you're not digesting fats like you were before. So now that's a situation in which I have to look at, okay, what deficiency does this person have so I can treat that deficiency? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. When I'm looking at a client or a patient or even at anybody, an athlete, most people, oh, I'm going to put this, or I'm going to put that on this. No, I look at the disease state, which is the most important thing that you have to look at because you want to give a diabetic patient the same diet as a non-diabetic patient, which both are power lifters. Well, this guy is diabetic. I'm going to have to go, not give him that many starches. Yeah, so um, I guess we'll transition to the next question and kind of come back here a little bit. But so somebody that's walking into their first blood test mm -hmm. because like def like to find deficiencies you really need to get blood work done Abs well no that is that is actually incorrect no you can look at the body of that person and you can actually show or prevent or present already findings that tell me okay that person already have deficiencies for example if you look at most people um fingernails and they have lines that either go with the lines of the body or across the body or perpendicular to the body, that might be a mercury a mercury toxicity or it might make a zinc deficiency. So I can look at that. Also, if you have cracks, hands, or you have wrinkles, I'm 59, I don't have wrinkles on my skin, right? On my on my on my the back of my wrist. So you guys look at the back of your wrist right now, and you have a bunch of wrinkles uh, like at 90 degrees from your arm line. Okay, that means that your sugars are going up and down. So I already know that you have a deficiency and an issue. So your sugars are going up and down. So you have deficiency on chromium. You might have deficiency in vanadium. You know, you might have deficiency in all these things. Well, the skin is already messed up. So you might have a vitamin C deficiency. You might, you might have a glycine deficiency. that People are not aware about it, what glycine is, which we'll discuss in a second. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny because, no, you don't need a blood test. You can see. Another sample is, for example, I put my stethoscope on your heart and you're a female, and you don't have a murmur, and now you present with a massive murmur, well, you might have iron deficiency, and you have to work out many times that it did. So there are all the things that can allow you to see, for example, you have cracks in the borders of your lips, on the corners, that might be a B6 deficiency. Interesting. If you have a what is called a strawberry tongue, you might have a B12, niacin deficiency. So there are signs already that you can see. It just takes time to develop that art. Most physicians... You know, now they sit on a computer, they ask you the questions, they look at the computer, and then they never looked at you. And they give you a medication. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I, do, I don't have, I don't give, well, you know how I'm yeah, with, yeah. with technology. I don't yeah. even have a computer in my office. That, yeah. tells, that tells you something, so. Yeah, so um, with, with that art aside, like if, 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 if like again, somebody that hasn't walked in a blood test, like what am I asking them to the, test? The best test is a spectra cell lab test. Okay. Now, this test is amazing because it doesn't only test your blood because you're getting the blood, but it tests your white blood cells. How fast do they grow? And this will test deficiency and depletion on that white blood cell. It tells you how fast, how optimal to grow. When those levels are not optimal, you can start seeing the differences. Another great one is called a nutri-evaluation. And the nutri-evaluation is by a company called uh, is GS, GSD or GLD, great laboratories or something like that. And they have a huge, massive test. They check blood and urine, and they check if you're deficient in B vitamins. But the way they do it there, they check B vitamin levels, but also they check metabolite levels, which is pretty pretty nice, awesome. Yeah. So, for example, if you have high levels of paraglutamate, 
That means you have a glutathione deficiency. So there's all those things that you can see that are amazing. So both death, if I have a true nutrition, I have a vitamin question, I say, oh my God, I need to know which specific vitamin Spectra Cell Lab is the best. And by the way, I don't make any money. I don't have any association, but I use them. That's all I do. And the Spectra Cell Lab has the advantage that it's a, it's a massive test and it's for like 250 bucks or $300, which is way worth it. That's a win. Yeah. So um, as far as like the lipid panels and those those kind of things, then that's totally different. Lipid panels. Most most people check what lipid panel means. Cholesterol, HDL, DL. Yeah. I don't like that test. It's a wimpy test, but I have to use it for because of the medical standard of care. If I was gonna check any blood test on fats, I would get what is called omega three index. Okay. And omega three index, what it does, it takes the cells and they say, okay, how much omega three do I have in there? And they give me the ratio of omega six to omega three. So if you don't have 20% to 30% of omega-3s, then you're in trouble. That means the communication with the cells is being affected. Anybody can get omega-3 through LabCorp or Quest. So that's an easy test to do. Yeah. But there's tests that specialize on it. Actually, the cool thing about some of those tests, if you can be very mo much more specific, a Nutrival will do that. It tells you how much omega-3, how much omega-6, how much omega-7 you have, which all those things are very important. So if you're going to get evaluated doing a normal LabCorp test, you won't be able to do it. You have to have other things. Now, I want to say I don't do that in every patient that comes in because sometimes I say, oh, yeah, I can give you multivitamin and I already get yeah. rid of that depletion that you have, no deficiency. So they don't have to spend the money on the blood That's test right. because uh, this is kind of like a check every box for yes, now. or like uh, For now. Yeah. Now, if you come back, oh, 80% of my symptoms are normal, but I still have 20% of my symptoms. Then I'm going to look into the specific of what I want to do. Okay. I say, okay, you got better, but you know where you want to be. Nay, I need to go. I go. I have to go look for that needle on the haystack. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like that approach too. It just it, it's it's affordable and it's it's usable. Yes, I try to make of, a lot of my patients don't need that approach. They say, Eric, order whatever you want, and I don't do. Most doctors do a, and let me go into that. Most doctors do a CBC, which is a white blood cell, white blood cell count on hemoglobin, and they do a, what is called a chemical profile, which checks sodium, potassium, blah blah blah, and your sugars, right? Most doctors do that. They don't go beyond that. Now, unless you're older, they do a PSA, which if you're over 50, which they should do, but I don't believe on that test either, but that's what they order. And now, that, is that for like calcium? Like what, what's that? Well, well, the complete metabolic profile checks your calcium, checks your magnesium, checks your liver enzymes, checks your sodium, potassium, checks your chloride, che checks your butane and creatine. So it checks all those things, kidneys, let's say kidneys, liver, yeah, the but regular stuff. They don't go beyond that. The CBC checks how your bones are working. So the, your hemoglobin, your MCV, your hematocrit. So if you're taking testosterone out there, guys, you know, you check your CBC will give you how high your hemoglobin is, right? Yeah. That's what it will give you. But that's basically what they do. In my office, for me, a normal person, I don't order a test. When I order a test, I just go, oh, I'm going to order all these tests to see what I find. No, I look at you and say, okay, I think you have this, this, and this. And based on what I see, then I'm going to order a test. I order a test to verify my, my theory or my hypothesis at the time that later becomes a theory. I don't just order a test. Oh, let me order. For example, you go to Cleveland Clinic and you get a thousand tests. Even You just walked in. Oh, I'm going to suck your blood. You get a thousand tests. Then they go through a test. Oh, you're fine, which I found out that they're wrong because when I look through them, oh my God, the answer is there. They just never looked at it. So for me, I have to think about what I'm going to order when I see the patient. Now, they said, Eric, you know, you don't see me. I'm in a Zoom. By the way, I don't like Zoom, but I, I do a Zoom. Can, what can you check? And I know, look, cannot see you, how you walk, how you react, how you move your lips, how you move your hands. When you're talking to me, then I'm going to, okay, I need to get a CVC. I got to get a complete metabolic profile. I got to get a B12 folate. I got to get a GGT, which are hemoglobin A1C. I will check insulin. I will check glycomar. And, and most people are going to have, what the hell are those? Insulin and glycomar is the, the level of insulin, how much insulin you're making. If you're making too much, you're resistant, that put you at a risk factor for diabetes. Glycomar tells me how high, high up and down the sugars go after you eat. If you ask a physician what a glycomar is, most of them go, I don't have no idea what that is because we don't use it, but I love it. It's a great, a great 
he tells me okay that's interesting is that so that kind of comes off as like it's a, it's kind of the inverse but like the heart rate variability like you you can tell how high and high low my heart rate goes yes it's similar for the insulin absolutely so the insulin you know let me give you an example i have a guy that comes to my office and blood sugars is 74 and the guy starts making fun of me oh my sugar is 74 dude yours is 81 well okay that guy that had the sugar 74 i check his insulin is 104 insulin which by the way normal is less than 15. well what pro that, what's happening is for 74 sugars he needs a hundred and 115 insulins meanwhile for my 85 i only need 15. yeah you see what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so they i know screw that guy screw up i thought that guy's fucked up he's going to become diabetic yeah soon. which is why you need a professional to read your blood work and or request your blood work when it's necessary uh, absolutely and you know I want to tell the listeners, don't be scared of asking, hey, I want this test. Uh, a lot of patients that come to me, well, I ask the doctor to do this test. You know, it's kind of funny. First of all, the patient is not paying for it. The insurance usually doesn't yeah. pay for it. Just do it. Most doctors, oh, you don't tell me what to order. They assume that position, which yeah. you're there for. The their patient ego, there, yeah. I know. And, you know, it's kind of funny. The patient is there to find out what's wrong with them. 99% of the patient will tell you what's wrong. And you only find out in 1%. Okay, because I, I get the weird cases, right? I never get the easy case. So by the time they come to see me, they have done 99%. Yeah, so you, have, so you have a lot of information. Yes, yeah. I have a lot of information. And I have to find that 1% that, okay, I got to figure out what's wrong. So, you know, as a family practitioner, I see central core disease, which I'm sure I'll let you guys look that up. I, I have minimum change disease on kidneys. So I have all these things that come to see me because they have tried everything they could. And when they get to me, say, oh my God, I've tried everything. And they, well, you have the World Book Encyclopedia right here. Let's look through it. Oh, you didn't order this test. And that's what I do. One sample I want to give you is for those guys that listen to this podcast, usually they're more muscular, better shape, healthier than the regular people. So what they check is a BUN and creatinine on your blood test. Uh, BUN means blood, urea, nitrogen. So, and creatinine is the amount of muscle you break down chose as creatinine. Now, I want you to remember this. When they did the research on these blood tests, they were not doing it on a healthy person uh, that works out on his muscular. Yeah. They were doing it on a sick person. So now they got these levels. Oh, creatinine, it should be 0 0.99 or 1.00. Well, this guy had two pounds of muscle. Of course, you come to the doctor and you're Jack like Brian. And, oh my God, you were 1.45. Or you have kidney failure, or you have you have you have an issue with your kidneys, which is not true. You have to look at the patient and find out what's going on. For me, the best test for a kidney and a guys like you is something called C cystatin, C dash cystatin, C Y S T A T I N. And the reason that that test is so important because it doesn't matter if you're fat, skinny, muscular, or non-muscular. That can predict what's happened to your kidneys in three years. Okay. Which is, the, that's what you want to know. I want to prevent disease. I don't want to treat disease. Okay, my cystic statin is really high. I'm in trouble. Okay. If my cystic statin is low, I'm fine. So no. be aware of that. No, I like that. And then the, to bring it back to like uh, outside of the vitamin world, the supplement world, um, the creatines, the aminos, branch chain versus okay. essentials, like that kind of concept. Uh, like what would you recommend to somebody that's mm -hmm. like... Uh, we're not, not going to say on a budget, but like like some okay. general supplements uh, for that, somebody. That, that's, that, that's actually a great question. I have three different companies that make protein shakes for me. I was a huge protein shake believer on gain weight and lose weight. And I was using them for a long time. The only problem is when I started using the same protein powder over and over, I started freaking getting bloated or farting and killing people in the room. <laughs> you know, not digesting and thinking, what's going on? And then, you know, God is amazing. And then I started thinking, okay, which protein in nature has no fat with it? And I looked at nature and I looked at nature. There's no one single protein source that has no fat. You cannot find it unless you separate it with processing, which is what we do. So we take whey and we separate it from the milk or we take casein and we separate it. The only problem is that every single source of high protein content always have fats. Now, when you consume the protein, you consume it on water because you want almond milk yeah. or you want to consume it on coconut, you know, low-fat bullshit. You should never do that because the reason that happens is the fat is there to slow down the digestive system so you can break down those proteins because it's hard to break them down. So you have fat slow down, makes you fuller, it kills your appetite sooner. For example, if you eat Chinese rice or sushi, by the way, 
<laughs> Brian bought me dinner and he had five pounds of sushi. He's going to be hungry in two hours because all rice, yeah, there was some protein there, but his sugar is going to go up. They're going to come down. Now, if he eats pizza, he's going to get fuller because there's fat, proteins, carbohydrates all mixed together. So for me, protein shakes are a great source of a protein source, but I would never use it more than four times a week. Why? Because you develop allergies. So, for example, let me explain this. If you start eating whey protein over and over and over, you're going to become cheese, yogurt, milk, absolutely allergic. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. You're going to start having rashes, maybe joint, joint pains. My back kills me when I do certain protein shakes. So, I am a big believer that I need to, yes, I want to have protein shakes, but I'm not going to have it every day. And that's what most people do. I do it either Monday or Friday, but I separate some days. I prefer free foam amino acids. And the reason I prefer free foam amino acids is because now I'm getting the protein sources totally broken down. I'm not going to get allergies. I'm not going to get bloated. I'm going to be able to digest it and absorb it quicker. Now, if you tell me, well, I have 20 grams of protein of whey and I have 20 grams of amino acid, which I would take the amino acids anytime yeah. because I don't have to digest it. I don't feel sick to my stomach. It is better for you. I can absorb them quicker. It affects my mind, my moods, everything. I don't fart. I don't get bloated, all the other side effects of it. You do not need that fat there because they're already digested. Nice. So so be aware of that. Go, I know you have a question. What do you have questions? No, so just uh, just because just it bleeds into another question. So same stance on the milk and the proteins and the whey. Um, eggs. Like, so yes. th- now... Well, eggs are, are an amazing... <laughs> and we have our own eggs. You know that. You, yep. you grab some eggs sometimes. Okay. This is the problem with the eggs. Once you get... Once you like eggs, you eat them what way? One way. Yep. I like them over easy. I'm going to have them over easy all the time. Or, or I like the scrambled. I'm going to eat them scrambled all the time. Now, bodybuilders here, I'm going to make fun of them. I have to eat egg whites. Well, what? Why do you think the eggs come with the fat and the freaking protein together? Because the fat slows down the freaking digestive system and you can digest the protein. So now you buy uh, egg whites on the con- plastic container, you know, homogenized. I bet you guys don't even know what that is or, or you know, whatever. And I'm laughing because I'm thinking, no, you need the fats. The egg comes together, together with fats and proteins. Now, if you're going to consume eggs, do not consume them the same way over and over. And this is the reason. If I cook, if I cook a boiled egg, right, it's going to be harder to digest than a scrambled egg. Try it yourself. When you're chewing it and masticating it, you have the egg yolk and the eggs, you have to spend time with it. What happened to scrambled eggs? You can't even swallow them, correct? Yeah, well, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, well, I, the, my allergy's gone now, but yeah. <laughs> yes, but you know, they do it. And it's funny that Brian said, my allergy is gone. What happens? He was consuming so many eggs that then the eggs, he became allergic. Because in real life, food comes in seasons. It's not there all the time. Now you have the supermarket, so I'm gonna go eat the chicken every day, every day. Well, in the old days, you got to go get the chicken. You got to go get the turkey. You got to go kill the cow or the deer. Yeah. It wasn't there on the freezer all the time. So that's why you need to absolutely complete your sources of, of protein sources every single day if you could. Now, I'm not saying that, oh, I don't want to eat a steak every day. You can eat steak, but you want to have burgers. You want to have flank. You want to have ribs. You know, change it. Also, the way you cook it makes a massive difference on the way you're going to do it. For example, most people, well... They used to, most people used to have hamburgers well done. And the reason they did it that way is because it was preventing bacteria and stuff like that. But now we know that, you know, when you cook your meat, you don't want to overcook it because that kills the nutrients. It does all kind of other things. So it's better to have a medium, medium rare. And I know people don't like that out there, but that has more nutrient sources than just a well cooked meat because it completely changed the proteins. Never, 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 never cook proteins on a microwave oven i know it's going to kill a lot of guys out there i love to hear it yeah yeah but i'm telling you that's the worst for it just put a the best way to tell this put an egg on the microwave cook it and when you when you freaking take it out you can play volleyball with it yeah because it's so hard and rubber that's called the nature of the of the protein you will not digest that it's going to take a hard hard time because it's causing what is called cross link it damages the protein you don't even want to eat it so do not cook your food that is going to be its protein source in the microwave. The microwave, what it does, it heats the water particles inside the protein, inside of whatever it is, and it and it just changes it. Now, can you cook vegetables? Can you cook stuff like that? You can if you put them in water, heats it up, the molecules get up, 
and that is fine. But protein, no source of protein should be heated up. On, in, we don't have a microwave. Yeah, no. You, you know that for years. Bl blew my mind when yeah. I was 16 years yeah. old. Right. It's like, a microwave. Can I heat this up? Yeah. <laughs> yes, on the oven. But no, don't do that. Don't matter what it is. Don't matter what protein source. Do not put on the microwave oven. Now, to answer your question, if I have if I have all the money in the world, I would only buy free foreign aminos. I wouldn't waste my time with protein shakes or protein, let's call it protein meals. Uh, unless I was going to gain weight and I don't have no digestive issues, then I will use whey, isolate, whey concentrate. And actually, I'm doing a research project right now with lactoferrin. And not many people don't know what a lactoferrin is. One kilogram of lactoferrin is about twelve fifty for fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's it's an expensive it's, little it's product. Yeah, but that digestibility is amazing. Another one that is amazing is called immunolin, and immunolin is a very high concentration of actually. This is going to kill some people. Cow blood, and um, I was the first person to put cow blood on a protein, but the mad cow disease made me take it out because people would go nuts. But immunolin is a way of getting immunoglobins in your system from a protein source. Just think about it. About five grams of that is it's like 25 bucks. So it's pretty expensive too. So be aware of that. But the difference is amazing. Now, lactoferrins is kind of funny. It's so bioavailable and so powerful that you, okay, you need 25 grams of, of whey, but you can use five grams of lactoferrin and you get the same, yeah. which is insane, high quality. Okay, uh, be aware of that. Do not believe, and I'm going to say this, and I'm a big proponent of collagen. For example, do you know what collagen is deficient on? Do no, know? I do not. Okay, most people don't know this. Collagen has no tryptophan. Hmm. So collagen cannot be considered a complete protein, but most people tell, sell it, oh, the best protein, the best complete yeah. protein. It's a complete protein, right? Battle protein. Yeah, no, put, it, put it in your coffee, take yes. it after your workout, everything. Yeah, uh, yeah but it doesn't have tryptophan, which... Tryptophan is what makes you help make serotonin. So I have some kids in my office that come, oh, I use collagen, 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 collagen. Oh, I'm a little depressed. I'm a little depressed. Why well, don't know eating foods with tryptophan sources? And, so, and, the, and the reason they're depressed is lack of serotonin production. Yes, yeah. which is not always the case. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. But, but, um, but it's pretty easy. They say, well, what, what are you doing? I say, well, I like collagen. I'm allergic to whey. I'm allergic to dairy. So I'm having collagen. Collagen is a great product, especially for the skin, hair, eyes and stuff like that, but you need to add a little tryptophan. So have a collagen in the morning and a whey concentrate in the afternoon. That is perfect because you're getting two different protein sources. Yeah. But be aware of that. Also, when you get a protein, a protein pro product has been heated, separated, you know, it has been changed all the way to your table. Yeah. Okay. So which is aware. Now, creatine, I have the guy that I consider the best creatine person in the world here last week and I called Brian his name is Dr. Jeff Stout and he just came out with a book and he I was pissed at him because he usually sent me his book signed he's kind of getting a little greedy and hiding it what, from what's me. the title of the book ah crap I don't know something I'll, I'll find it and put it in the show notes Jeff yeah. Stout it's not published yet he okay. showed me the cover nice which is about creatine but not for performance but the other side effects of creatine which were amazing depression Alzheimer's neuromuscular is all the things that creatine is coming out that which is unbelievable of what creatine can do creatine can prevent headaches creatine increases your s adenosine methionine all these things that we are not aware of that creatine does i'm like, oh i'm doing it to get work out well now when you ask people yeah, so so minus the accent he's saying creatine not yeah, like creatine, no creatine or anything yeah creatine creatine yeah. yes yeah and you need between five to ten grams no you and i make by the way i was the first person to talk about creating loading and no you don't need loading now i know that if you have a high meat concentration on your diet just take your normal five grams if you're a vegetarian yes you need to load because it helps you okay because it's low in, the, in your diet but creatine is one of the best supplements out there that i highly recommend one thing that i haven't talked about is, you're talking about amino acids is glycine glycine is an amino acid that okay this is a cool little trick for all you guys there Glycine tastes exactly like sugar. It even tastes better like sugar. It's, it's a sweetener. Now, glycine side effect is that if you take three or more grams, it puts you to sleep. Glycine is acts like GABA. Actually, it allows you to relax. Huh. Glycine protects you against heart attacks. People don't know that. Glycine helps you actually treat heart attacks, MIs. In a few studies, 
I mean, you guys can look it up on Google, glycine and MIs, which most people don't know that because glycine helps the endothelium. They, the, they put it in people's IVs that have heart, had heart attacks, right? Yeah. Or, uh, or, some people do, no other people okay, don't. Right. So this is kind of interesting, but glycine is an amazing amino acid. People only use two grams to go to sleep. I use five, 15, 20 grams. It makes him try it. You'll see a difference. I'll definitely try it. That's mentality, exciting. And I have, I have samples, but you, you can also put on coffee. You don't have to put stevia. You don't have to put any sweetener. You put glycine. You put five grams of glycine in, in, a, in a cup of coffee, you have five grams of protein. Yeah. I mean, it's only glycine, but it's an amino acid, right? I should say amino acid, not protein. But you put an amino acid there, you drink it, actually, it actually tastes really, really sweet. That's dynamite. I like that a lot. Uh, okay, so that's a new trick for all of you guys out there. Glycine is freaking, freaking cheap. So far, as soon as they start finding out what it can do, what it does to your joints, what it does to your skin, to your endothelium. I want to add this. Remember I was talking about wrinkles? Yeah. Okay. The most abundant protein in your body, do you know which one it is? No. <laughs> I'm at this damn football yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, collagen. You, you tell me about an offensive formation <laughs> I got you, but yeah. So collagen is the most abundant because the skin, everything is made out of collagen. Endothelium and everything. Well, when you start getting wrinkles, it's damage on your collagen. Okay, this is because the, the collagen has a very, very high concentration of two amino acids, proline and glycine. By the way, proline was discovered by the Ohio State University. <laughs> I just want to add that there. Good plan. Know that I care, but yeah. I'm just saying that. But glycine and proline, well, the sugars cause what is called aging or age, advanced glycation and products. It's not age from getting older, but it causes this damage. So the sugar comes and binds to your surface on the collagen and it causes the wrinkle. Now, this is prevented by vitamin C and glycine, which is interesting. Like if you have wrinkles, you start getting little wrinkles, back off of the sugars, start taking glycine with vitamin E or even collagen, and you see your wrinkles go away. So you're saying, are you specifically referring to the wrinkles on the back of the wrist? Or are you saying like face and everything? And the face also. Depends oh. how. Also on the back of your neck. So I want you yeah, to do this. That's a and I did, I did, Brian, make look at people's the back of the neck. If you sit on an airport and you sit on the on the airport and you're sitting at the person in front, I, I'll say, oh, that guy has diabetes. Why? Because he looks like a map on the back of his neck, even though they're young. For example, on my last flight, I had a 23-year-old guy in front of me that looked like his neck looked like shit. And I said, this guy has diabetes. By the way, that got up, he, he got up like five, six times to go to the bathroom. Okay. Which, is, which is another way to identify it. Uh, Deficiency yeah, yeah. or something going on. So be aware of that. Those, that's a little trick. Just look at yourself on the mirror. Go look at your wife. Go look at your husband and say, okay, let me see what I see. And you're going to see that there's a deficiency or a depletion, depending on where you are, to cause a dysfunction later. The dysfunction is the wrinkles is already happening. Yeah. The depletion can be either, you know, the glycine, can be the collagen, and the deficiency can be the vitamin C, the vitamin E, or whatever. So all those little tricks out there you can use. Yeah, I like to that. that. I, I like that a lot. There's some little something you can take home with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah you yeah. can use it right now. Yeah. Say, oh, honey, you're getting a little old, you know. Yeah. You have wrinkles on the back of your neck. Don't do that, but, but be but, aware but of that. A, it's a natural solution. Like, who knows if that prevents a year or two of uh, whatever. What's heart the, attacks. You can prevent heart attacks. Oh, yeah. Heart attacks, um, Botox. And I'm Absolutely. saying like that kind of. That kind That's of, way more expensive than glycine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, um, but so while we're kind of like we, we dabbled in the creatine loading deal, but like a lot of questions came up about fat loading. How do, how do you properly fat okay. load? Okay. First of all, fat is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, I want you guys to do that. Ask the residual dietitian which one is the best source of, of fat. And they're going to tell you vegetable fats, okay? And I want to ask the public here, and I hope that you guys answer that question to Brian on his questions and answers. How many vegetable oils do you guys know? How many do you know? Brian we, is very we, smart. We, Brian, we, we, we did this on the last podcast. Yes. It made me look really stupid, yeah. No, no, but it's yeah. zero. But people don't so type pay attention. Now, fats for me are the sense of Everything in your body has fat on it. You need to have every single cell have cholesterol, phospholipid, sterols, which are type, different types of fats. So you need to make sure that you consume fat. Now, what kind of fat you want to consume? You want to consume more monounsaturated fats, not poly, but monos. Why? Because mono is the highest content in every animal that you eat, even on lard or even in freaking whatever, lard, bone, uh, uh, tallow, which is, that is beef tallow, which is fat from the cow. Always monounsaturated fat. So try to consume monounsaturated fats. That includes olive oil. Now, this is a very interesting 
uh, caveat here. If you if you have polyunsaturated fats, which I'm going to give you an example of polyunsaturated fat, canola, corn oil, uh, soybean oil, which are the most consumed on the vegetable oils, okay, you will have a tendency to have more damage on your skin and body. Why? Because those are very highly polyunsaturated fats, meaning they have a lot of car double carbons, chemically meaning that fat can bend. That fat is liquid on room temperature. Yeah. When it does that, it, that means that it can be damaged easily. Sunlight can damage it, okay? Uh. Heat can damage that. That's why you cannot cook with certain oils because it damaged the oil really, really acutely. Now, I'm going to say something that we didn't discuss the last time. You're going to cook, be aware of this, never, never cook with olive oil. And I know a lot of people are doing it. Yeah. The only time you cook with olive oil is in medium heat. Cannot go about 135 degrees. Huh. Once you go about that, you damage the oil. Is you got to throw it away. So what do you recommend you cook in? Either use avocado oil, coconut oil, or butter. Okay, okay? perfect. Because, it, because right. they have a high melt, what's called a, help, a, a smoke point. Now, otherwise, the other oils, you're going to have issues. You don't want to do that. All those oils are high either on saturated fat or monosaturated fats, very, very high. So you're allowed, I mean, almost all of them are high in saturated fats, specifically saturated and medium chain triglycerides, which don't get damaged and a little bit on mono. But I'm telling you right now, do not use anything else to cook. If you're going to cook on high temperature, you're going to fry everything, use avocado oil. It's the best, period. Now, some people will tell me, oh, I use peanut oil. I wouldn't use it, but that's your choice. And a lot of people cook on peanut oil because it's really, really cheap and you can buy in huge containers. Do not do that. If you're going to have also use fats, try to stay away from the canola, the corn oils, the things like that, that are high on polyunsaturated fat. If you're going to add fat to anything the only two fats i i will add to any meal either either i want you to listen saturated fat or mono i used to serve here when brian was playing football all the time i would make a fat salad remember the fat yeah, salad yeah, yeah just cake uh, yeah. yeah and it was and I, I would take bacon i cook the bacon put the grease right there i remember i i don't know brian remember i take a pot of butter a block of butter and put on the fat that is hot and let it melt Right, so I have bacon and butter there, and then we have eggs, avocados, bacon, lettuce, uh, just, pistachios. Just, just fat in general, but then like the, the fat. The, turn, then we turns use into the, dressing. the salad dressing. Yeah, yeah, that was our dressing. Yeah, I, I remember Zach. He would go, oh, oh, that's fat. That's gonna kill you. Well, he th he thinks fat's gonna make him fat, which, <laughs> yes. is, which is not which the is smartest. wrong. Yeah. Now you asked me a specific question about fat loading, which is amazing. If you're gonna use fat loading, you have to be aware of this. Females respond different than males. Okay. Be aware of that. So when you're going to start loading on a female and you can, you have to be very, very careful. If you're going to start loading with a female, make sure that that female is doing aerobic training. Why? Based on experience, they tend to gain some fat. And, and let me explain why, Brian. Females get pregnant. You guys don't get pregnant. And I think that because the saturated fat is such protective mechanism into the system that allows the pregnancy to develop protects and that's why women had that little push on the belly because that fat protects against the temperature changes on the uterus it protects against trauma to the uterus so it's very very cool so be aware when you're fat loading you have to be careful how you're doing it now when i'm preparing any diet i have a triangle and i call it calorie restriction macronutrient restriction okay so calorie restriction i just you know my calories macronutrient restriction mean i'm gonna i'm gonna specific lower you know carbohydrate fat you know what whatever i want to do which which and time restriction is the other one so on time restriction i'm gonna restrict the times that i eat it can be i only eat twice a day or i only eat every other day whatever you decide so i'm looking into that right once i know calorie restriction macronutrient restriction and time restriction, they're going to decide what I'm going to do with that person. And I, if I'm using fat loading specifically, what I'm going to do is, okay, if it's a guy, I might make you have low carbohydrate for three or four days, high protein, minimum fat. I keep like chicken, you know, the usual low-fat bullshit. And then on day five and six, I make you fat load that day. And on that day is high-fat proteins, our hamburger, eggs, you know, with egg yolks, uh, olive oil, coconut oil, alcohol, I add everything you can. Now, be aware when you're fat loading, you want to combine it with a little bit of calorie restriction, okay? Okay. And also the fat sources have to be right 
because bad fats can cause heart disease. Now, when I'm talking about bad fats are polyunsaturated fats that are cooked or like bread that have crap on it or fats that are not good for you. So when you're consuming good fats, you're okay. When you're consuming bad fats, it's not okay. So for example, milk from the container of a supermarket is a bad fat. Be aware of what I'm saying. Whole food milk from a store, meaning grocery store, Kroger's, whatever, is not good milk because you cannot see the fat. The fat has been homogenized, meaning that the molecules of the fat has been made smaller so they got a greater surface area so they can combine with the water. You do not want to do that. For you guys to understand how bad it is, if you buy a container of milk, it says uh, fortified with vitamin D. Why would you freaking fortify milk? Look at how stupid people are. Oh, this has vitamin D. Added. Oh, it has extra calcium added to it. Well, no, it's in there. What happens? It was damaged on the processing of the milk. So you do not want to have those fats. Fats from cheese, be aware of those in females do not use cheese to fat load. It just creates fat. I don't know what it is. And I there's a couple of research that look at the distribution of the fat. And as soon as you start adding a lot of cheese, the person or the female will gain a lot of fat. So you're using fat loading for a female, stick with avocado, or monounsaturated fat, olive oil, and stick with like, you know, clean fats. Do not mess with adding cheese, dairy, or anything like that, because it's not gonna go well. And most people, the problem is that they're low with cheese yeah. or fat like that. Now, a great source for females is freaking uh, nuts. They will do very well with that. And of course, most females don't will, don't will not do mm. fat loading. If I'm gonna use fat loading the maximum amount of times on a female, I'll do it once a week, max, max twice a week. In guys, depending on the activity levels and the other things that I talked about, I can do it two or three times during the week. Yeah, and you're saying like with with the time restriction, so like the the high protein for four days leading into the four or five days and leading yes. into these two high days. Do you have like a specific macro breakdown? Not at that time, Brian. I cannot do that because I need to know what the is the person okay. a runner, a lifter. You know what they're doing because I might do fat loading, but you're a marathon runner. I might have starches too at the same time. Yeah. Which at that time on a on a runner, he feels oh my god, I feel fantastic now. I have short short source of uh, yeah, you have, you have energy short and the high term. octane. Yes. Yeah. But now you're a bodybuilder, then I I don't want you having that much starches. I want to. You're a power lifter. Hey, go up low on the fat. Have a little bit of starches. Like for example, Eddie Hall. He's doing kind of a fat loading. He can freaking eat fat because he's running. He's doing all kind of stuff. He's you're, adding. You're saying starch. he can eat fat, or he's adding. You can he's, eat carbs. He's, yeah. he's using fat and carbs because he's boxing. He's doing aerobic intensity, but he's doing high intensity. So he needs a little bit of both. You're doing that. If you're a pure power lifter that want that you see to get leaner, then don't have any starch with the pure fat. Yeah, cool. That because that question actually came from a power lifter. He's hoping to like properly fat load to cut oh, for I, let's, a power lifting. Let's, let's yeah. talk about a power lifter. And, and a power lifter, what I would do is, if he wants to keep his weight, not gain weight, I would do four, I would do four or five days of high protein, low fat diet, medium starches, just doing starches to consume what I'm doing to keep my energy yeah. at what it's supposed to be, and then Saturday or Friday evening to, and I would oh one one little spot here, if I'm gonna fat low, I do not eat fast after fats after eight o'clock. The reason is I'm gonna go lay down. Okay, digestive system works by movement. You're moving, so it helps it. And gravity, gravity pulls down your food. Now you're going to lay down flat. Now you have a high consumption of fat that stays there on your stomach because you're not standing up or moving. You go to bed, you're going to feel like a bloated sea whale there. So be aware of that. You want to eat it before 8 o'clock. So you start, you keep moving, you can do everything. I guess so, like, my understanding is pretty elementary in this area. But, like, so, but, like, it takes the least amount of calories to digest the, f the fat itself. Yes. So how, how does the, those two things uh, Well, conflict? what happens is fat is a, is a blob, right? Now, I'm going to take that fat that requires, it is easy to digest on a sense, but you require your gallbladder. So it specializes just on digesting fat. But you're going to lay down. When you lay down, peristalsis or movement of the intestine requires gravity at the same time. Yeah. Now, if I'm standing up or sitting up, my, my intestines are pointing down, gravity is pulling down, so it's going to move it. When I go lay down, 
you yeah. don't let you know pulling down. Yeah, you you can supplement it with uh, taping your mouth so your diaphragm <laughs> works a little more for digestion. Uh, yeah, I just I see powerlifters yeah. breathe. They they eat, yeah. you know you know no you want to be either standing up or moving when you come from these fast so they can move faster to your intestines easier for you to digest them. would, would like a walk after eating absolutely okay, i will yeah. take a walk that will be easier for me to digest that way easier yeah um so while we're on the diet topic um high protein high fat like mm -hmm. what what's the correct fat to protein ratio for well, most people most people think that they should consume 80 20 more more protein than fat first of all if you're consuming foods it is impossible i just told you that proteins and fats come together yeah if you have yeah, you, yeah, you, you have to eat fat yeah i, I well, was well i guess so like the protein so like it's saying well, i would like, say like 40 40 yeah turkey Prote turkey and like chicken who yes. are lower fat like say yes. somebody still thinks those are good sources of protein which <laughs> which I'm, they're okay yeah, yeah, they're yeah, okay yeah. but they're not high fat okay if you're gonna if you consume a high fat high protein diet and you're using chicken and turkey, then you need to add to it. Either add butter, add olive oil to it, so you can get the fat content up. Now, you're asking me about the ratios. I would say 40%. So 40-40, so like is for so for me, a football player, would that be fine to like... Yeah, absolutely, 40-40. So even if I was like trying to gain muscle even on you it? Try, because the 20% is going to come from starches at a certain specific time. For example, you, in the case, you're super lean. So you always want to, okay, 40-40, I eat my protein and my fats. I'm going to consume my, my, my starches at a certain time. And the best time to do that are either two times. If I want to lose weight, I want to consume it after my workout. If I want to if I want to gain weight, I want to consume it before and after my workouts. So those are the best two places to do it. Now, if you're highly, highly stressed, I want to consume some starches before going to bed because the lower your cortisol levels allows you to go to sleep. From, so, from, from the insulin spike? Yes, okay. from the insulin spike. Insulin is the most anabolic hormone, not testosterone, which lowers cortisol levels. Okay. So I want to go to bed. I'm, I'm, I'm top i eat sugar that's what most people do oh i feel sleepy yeah that's the way to induce that now i want i want to say there's another another molecule out there that you're not aware about is adenosine and, and most people think oh when i drink coffee oh i stimulate i'm cortisol blah 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 no the reason coffee blocks uh, or works so well is because it blocks adenosine on the brain. Yeah, which yeah, it's, which is, so it's not really giving you energy. No, yeah, it's blocking an element that is blocking you to consume your energy. But that's what coffee does well. That's why you're awake. And and you know it's kind of funny that when sometimes we do things we don't know, know that we're doing it, but it works. And coffee is one of those. It wakes me up. It's because as you're waking up, adenosine. It's coming, it's a little bit coming down on cortisol. It's, you're waking up, you're waking up because cortisol is going up, but adenosine is the other way. As adenosine goes out, you go to sleep. But as you're waking up, adenosine is still high, but you block it with caffeine and you're instantly awake. That's what happens. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, and I just haven't heard it explained that clearly because I knew it, I knew it stopped it, but I didn't, like, I didn't yeah, it understand. Yeah, blocks it. it well, I didn't know that was also the time that it was high, the, one of the times it's yes, highest. Yeah. Yes. And that's, you know, it's, Something else that the coffee does actually give you heart, heart rate variability. People don't know this, but if I take, if my heart rate is 80, 70, 70, 80, 80, also I have a cup of coffee, that's going to jump at 5, 10. Yeah. You're creating heart rate variability. Yeah, people don't very passively, yeah. Yes, but people are not aware of that. So, so I have people So, that, so what does what pre-workout do? It increases my heart rate variability <laughs> yeah, more? With no, that's the problem. That's what I'm going to go into. Now, if you continue to have coffee, 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 what's happening to your heart rate? It stays it's, high. It stays high all the time. Now you're not having... Your coffee is not giving you high variability. It's lowering high variability. So, so, so what's the threshold there? Oh, I do not know that. I never look into that. There's a guy named um, uh, Mark Myhold that might have an idea on that because he studies caffeine a lot. Doctor Stout might have that answer for you because he studies caffeine a lot. I don't have the answer. Okay, we'll get we'll get we'll get the boys on. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, so you can get it. I do not know the answer for that. Um, just to, just to retrace this, I, I forgot to tie this question before. And what are the benefits of fat loading? This is this is a great question. Believe it or not, what I'm going to say is going to... Okay, if you're eating low starches and you're fat loading a, a lot, and I'm going to say this as a benefit that is not a true benefit, your cholesterol goes down. You're going to go, what? I'm eating fat and my cholesterol is going to go down. Well, your body makes 60 to 70% of all your cholesterol. Two ways that it does it. Okay? One of, the, one of them is the buck system b-o-c-h i think that's the way it's called okay so we're eating fat and the boy says hey i don't need to make fat 
I can hold my, I can, I can do other things with my fat. So I'm eating all this fat. So now I'm consuming cholesterol. The body stops making cholesterol. I know that sounds. If you have a cholesterol, they always tell you to stop cholesterol or fat. So one of the benefits is, and actually we had Nolan Gossett here today. Remember? Yeah. And Nolan is a policeman. He's awesome. And you know, one of his benefits was, and we were discussing it today, is okay. My cholesterol when I met him was two six two sixty eight. And I put it, if you know, on a high-fat diet, yeah. carnivore diet. Well, your cholesterol today was 161. Yeah, that's that's the, awesome, yeah. That, you know, and the guys, oh, I want to have my study done by the doctor at the police department. And he's like, oh, my God, look how you're eating. Your cholesterol is going to be high. And then he gets the, the, the results and the 161. What? Well, the body doesn't want to make fat. Yeah. Why? Because you're giving it to me. Yeah. It's, it's just common sense. That's and, one. And the body's crazy smart. Which yes. Is, yeah, it's awesome, yeah. Joints. Your joints are fat. Also, this is going to be a key question for you. What percent of your brain is fat? Okay, so that answers your question right yeah. there. Is, was it, is it 80%? Well, if dry, yes. dry weight 68%. Okay, so that's really high. Now, this question is the one that's going to blow your minds. What percent of your bones is fat? And you guys are going to say bone. Bone is hard. Well, the inside is called the bone marrow. That's when you cook the bones. Yep. That is 100% fat. So that tells you an idea how beneficial fat is. Fat is where the cells get multiplied. Your red blood cells, your your white blood cells, your blood your plate here, your blood platelets. Yes. Yeah, so I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Yes. So that is uh, Brian used to eat low fat all the time too, but that is where you make all those. So those are the benefits. Your skin is almost all fat besides collagen. So those are things. That's why people have very dry skin because they don't consume the fat that you require to make your skin. Yeah. Pliable, all the things your joints are affected by fat. Yes, fat is absolutely a, a necessary by the standards of the to the evil that you should have all the yeah, time. Yeah, so so I use this analogy all the time, and uh, you said it maybe like a decade ago, so I don't know if it still holds up, but like um, we relate the size of the fat cells in the body to like boot, like when you go out and drink. So like when you go out and drink, you take your body to a dehydrated state and then you try and rehydrate and you drink all this water and you blow it up and hold on to it because your body doesn't know if it's going back to the desert or whatnot. So you drink a ton of water and eventually you dump it back out and you go back to normal size. Fat cells work very similarly. Absolutely. Their X size, if you're watching on video, my hands are bigger. (laughs) And then you give it enough healthy fats and these fat cells actually go down in size. Absolutely. Which I think is a great analogy because like that's why like the fish oils and all these things are good for your joints and good for your brain because the fat cells are decreasing in size, which is reducing inflammation. Is that still ac- yeah, very accurate? Yeah, absolutely. They can communicate better. It's funny that you brought that up. That's very smart, Brian. Um, if you take different fats and say, okay, there's two ways to gain fat. One is multiplying the cells, meaning I have more numbers of fats or my fat gets larger, right? Some people get some people get liposuction. I know you heard that. Yeah. Oh, I got liposuction, so I'm not going to get fatter again. So if you see, you look at those people, I don't change anything. Yeah. They get the fat again. Now, the question, how do they get that fat back? And different fat had different, uh, I would say, uh, response to the cells. This study was done in rats, by the way, not in humans, but they gave fat to certain rats and they did biopsies of the fat cells. And they were looking at which one increases the volume, meaning the number, and which one increases the size of the cell. Which interesting, omega-3s, what do they do? They increase the size, like Brian said, because initially they're deficient. Now I can take up all those omega-3. The fat cell got bigger, but all of a sudden, what did it do? Shrunk. Yeah. Because now cool. I don't need all the other junk. Now, what is very interesting, there was one fat that made the, the fat cells multiply more often, and that was corn oil, which is the number one oil used in the United States, yeah. which makes your fat multiply or cause hyperplasia or the or, or hyperplasia when it goes inside or wait a second Hi, hyperplasia <laughs> yeah. is when when you take the hypertrophy is when it grows I, yeah hyperplasia I, is when yeah, it multiplies. I, I don't know why you're looking at me for the answer no no that was my <laughs> but, fault no but uh yeah but so like if, if, if people look at their like what you're truly eating you'll see that show up all the know, time i know and corn oil people i don't eat corn oil almost every freaking thing out there has either corn oil soybean oil and, and sunflower use, like yes, all that stuff yeah yes and you have to be aware those are very high important saturated fats and because the cell is going to take that fat but it's not functional as good as the other fats that's what the cell stays uh, oh i got to multiply i'm not doing as well let me let me get rid of it let me get rid of this way let me multiply my cell here 
and lower my fat because I'm not getting the good fat still. So that's why you need to be aware of that. So that is a great comment that you make there. And and again, when you're going to lose weight, and this is going to be only heard on this podcast, keep your polyunsaturated fats low. Yeah, very very simple. But like again, it, like that something like just that minuscule to change in your diet, which actually is hard to change if you don't understand it. I agree. Will, will be massive. It's like simple and significant, which is really cool. But to, all right, to get away from like the diet and the supplement stuff, um, for somebody that doesn't have low access or that doesn't have access to like technology and all these recovery methods, like what are some very low, not 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 low level? Like I'm just saying, like what are great recovery methods oh. that don't cost money? Like like the I, breathing, I, yeah, breathing, breathing. Oh my god, sun, sleep, no that stress. Is, yeah, all well, the, yeah. But, no, but breathing is. People don't understand how important breathing is. You do. Yeah. I'll tell you this. 40% of all the reflux you can actually completely resolve with breathing. Are you, are you saying like good breathing mechanics or like just good like... Good breathing mechanics, meaning I take my diaphragm, I push down my, my, my stomach, I pull down my stomach, yep. now the food can get down there, my esophagus gets stretched. Yeah. I can actually pull more blood. Because now the negative pressure allows more blood to come in. Into the heart, yeah. Yes. Now my lungs expand more. So now the oxygen gets to where the blood is because blood weights is gravity. Yeah, it's the, the, the best oxygen exchange is in the bottom of the lung. Absolutely. Yeah. So breathing is the recovery system is the best. Easy to do. Another one, I know that you're going to believe this, is cold and hot showers. Yeah. Which allows you cheap. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn yeah. it off. You know, so you're asking me for cheap forms. Now, another form is um, free, free form aminos. Yep. They'll allow you to recover way, way faster. Another way is sleep that you brought up, okay? And another thing that I do a lot is puzzle. But I, I build puzzles all the time, yeah. which completely relaxes me and make me forget about everything else. Yeah, find something, find your variant of meditation. Uh, absolutely. And meditation can be, you might be playing basketball, and you when you're playing basketball, you're in a trance, in a happy place. You yeah. can be sitting down and reading, and, I, and Brian does a lot of reading and take notes. That's one way to do it. Spending time with the family. Yeah, which chopping, you do chopping wood, walking, like oh. like like feeding the opposite side of what you're breaking down. Whether that's feeding feeding the wolf that required that makes you better. Yeah, not the one that has anger. Yeah, not the one that's going to damage you. Stress, like etc. Yes. Like what um, what go go back to how you feel. Like how do you feel when you're with your family or chopping wood or doing a puzzle or go and and then feel when you're in. The, in the shit like when you're in the the stress of work or like the the excess of training or whatever you're doing like to just go back to feel and find like balance it out is what you're saying correct yes and and i, I want to say this that people that write the books are the champions are the ones that got the gold medal but those people are first of all genetic freaks they use stuff that you know helps them do better yeah let me put it that way so those people are not normal do not do what those people are telling you to do do what the what you are thinking. Okay, let me go listen to your ideas. Take those ideas. Let me see which one works the best for me. And again, something that I told Brian many years ago, the best strength coach is not the one that makes you stronger, but the one that fixes your weaknesses. Yeah, massive. Be aware of that. I see a lot of people that come here. Oh, I was benching 500 and now I bench 600. It made me stronger. Oh, how much, how much did your squat go up? Oh, it didn't go up. Okay. How much did your deadlift go up? Oh, it stayed the same. <laughs> so you didn't fix your weakness. You just make your own own freaking imbalance stronger. Yeah, which you're, you're building you're building strength on dysfunction. Um, yes, which I will, like that. Yeah, you need to put that up there. Yeah. Building strength on dysfunction. Yeah, it's a, it's which a, they, a lot of trainers do. Which, which is a problem too. And then when when he was referring to like the the athletes and the books and the magazines and those kind of things, you do need to like take that with a grain of salt. Like you don't know what they're truly on. You don't know if it's trt or steroids or anything along those lines so you do need to understand one you understand your weaknesses fix those but you also need to understand that what works regardless of if that person's on something or not um like that's their genetic makeup that's their diet allergies supplements all those things like they're not telling you everything in this article so you need to make sure you understand yourself and fill in your, your own program i, I think I, I just think fitness and health is still a person-to-person -person thing i don't see fitness is healthy but that's okay. Now, I'm going to give you a little secret. What do you mean? What do you mean fitness is healthy? When you call a fitness athlete, doesn't mean he's healthy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, Absence uh, of disease doesn't mean you're healthy. Yeah, I know, which is, which is, I love that freaking line too. Um, 
but it's yeah like also like when i when honestly like when i've done crazier diets and stuff and following <laughs> dr john toma and some of him down these rabbit holes like the when i've looked like cosmetically when i looked my best i probably felt my worst like, yes, because like I was I was six percent body fat. I remember, and that. it just and I was and just, your joints were stiff. Yeah, well, remember so, that? Yeah, same like Zach Boren. Like when he when he cut that weight for his pro day, <laughs> like he looked great, but he also like he was aching. I know, yeah. and I told him, I said, don't do that. But yeah, you, you listen at that. Yeah, I, I just wanted to go like because I like I wanted to go there with my body. I still want to know what my body's capable of. But um, but yeah, like that's like that's a something six per, that six percent you won't survive on the wild with no supermarket. Yeah, you know which saying? which is cool. So like one of my favorite shows is Alone. I know I I, I put I tried to put you guys on it. I I told Lisa to watch it. Uh, his wife, but um, on Alone, uh, they drop ten people out in the Arctic, and you like some of them like it's last man standing survives. And they did this one was a hundred days, and like the reason why everybody loses this weight, and because the fat's not available, you can't get fat in nature unless you killed an animal. Yeah, basically that, for the most part, especially up in the Arctic. If you're a vegetarian, you're dead. Yeah. By the sure. way, you're not gonna grow. Or let me put tomatoes on the ground. Well, wait three months for them to come back. Yeah, but like you, you realize very primally, really quick in that show that like fat is incredibly important. Like obviously in nature, and like for weight, like because a lot of people get canceled out of the show because they lost so much weight. Only the people that had killed something or maintained a fat source from fish or something survive in the show, and like, and they they keep their wits about them, things like that. So like, okay, like this this show exemplifies why I need fat. <laughs> yeah. So I I just I just wanted to put that little nuance in there, but yeah, it's just like uh, you know, just cause, just because you see somebody look freaking incredible doesn't mean that feels incredible. Oh, they you, yeah. oh, they're happy by the way. Which yeah, is well, a huge yeah. Thing. Which is I I want to tell you one of the one scene that I used to like that I. Once I got into my family, I ran away from it. Um, my dad always told me, and this is a great advice, and you guys can take it or not take it, but my dad said every day you're going to have two pieces of paper or in a book you have a, the front page and the back page. And he said, and when you're reading the pages, you also, when you turn when you turn a book, you usually tend to read the front page. You know, when you even, doesn't matter how you open the book, yeah. you open that front page. And my dad said, on that front page, every time you get home or every time you wake up, why are you grateful for or what are you thankful for? And he said, I, I want you to write five things. It doesn't matter what, but you need to write five things, which I thought five things are easy. Yeah. But there were days I remember going to medical school. Shit. You know, I have to be grateful today. And I sit there and I now I'm thinking, man, I woke up today. Yeah. You know, I laughed at the teacher today, you know, crap. I walked to school and it was crispy morning. You know, the cold weather was perfect. Yeah, I felt alive or something. Yes, yeah, yeah. and there were five things. And then that list went to five to ten. I was starting to recognize what I was supposed to be grateful for every day. Now, I would flip the page. My dad said, you're going you're gonna to write why it was a bad day or what was it a negative day. Yeah at, and the, it was, yeah, at the end of the day is what you're saying? At the end of the day. At yeah. the end of the day. And it was interesting because sometimes when I was writing what was I positive for, I went to the next page and with I thought I have all these negative yeah. things. I fuck. I sit there and like, what was I negative today? Well, when I thought the cold weather was bad, but I felt alive. I br Man, yeah. wait a second. And I sit there and I'm like, you know, what the hell, what was bad today? And, you know, and all of a sudden you go, oh, shit, I, have a gr I had a great day. Yeah. And then at the end of these pages, good day or bad day, and I start great day today. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. I was in medical school. Okay, if you get a C or a D in medical school, ooh, right then. It's, it's a bad day. It's a bad day, <laughs> right? So they test. I remember before the test, oh, I had to stay up. That was my negative day. Then here comes the, the test day. I got a C. Woohoo! Yeah. Great day, you know? Yeah. And it's funny because at the end, I remember I did it for four months in a row. I found out that of, you know, 120 days, I had 92 great days. Yeah, which is like, if, like if you don't, but so like to, to that point, like if you don't measure it, you can't track it. So like you, and then like your vocabulary limits your past. Like, so like if I only have this amount of words, like was it a good year? Like a lot of people are going to come January 1st or oh. December 31st and go, was it a good year? And if you didn't track it, you really don't. Now it's all yeah. based oh, on memory. And, and humans have this weakness. This is one of the biggest human weaknesses. I love you. You're my son, you know, Brian. And then I can, I can do everything for you. Keep you alive. Save you. But one day something bad happens or i did something by accident 
the humans are meant to remember that one bad thing. Negative for survival. Yes. So like it doesn't kill and that's me what again. We, yes. Yeah, and and that's what we're going to survive. But the only problem in the society that we're today, and those are my dogs. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, no, no, I'm with you. Okay. So, so, so that one thing, because we were learned to survive. And the best sample is I walk through this field every day to, to cut from six miles to one mile. But that one day I get bitten by one snake. Yeah. A poisonous snake. I would never, it doesn't matter that that route is the best route. I might move 20 feet away. I'm never taking that route again. Yeah. And that's we use as humans. You know, we, that one mistake of a, another human, we eat that. We, we, we take that and we, oh, look what he did to me. Yeah. But forget the other hundred great things yeah. they did to yeah. me. Yeah. So, so maybe like, I don't know what an equivalent of a snake bite is. Like maybe you got divorced this year or maybe. Yes breakup whatever ends up being like that one negative thing doesn't cancel out the entire year it's like it's like a bad football game like i used to like it's not a good way to live if like if you really have a bad game okay like set a boundary on how bad you feel about it and like start solving the problem of the bad game and find out how can i get better yeah and how and but like so okay i can understand and like kind of empathize with like i had a bad game i'm beating myself up cool but if I have a good game, which like I had a good game, but there's a bad play sprinkled in or something, and the only thing I can think about is the bad play, and I'm beating myself up again, that's a terrible way to live. Because like yes. good game, bad game, I'm still beating myself up because perfection is never attainable, and like you're not gonna live a perfect year, a perfect week to, by any means. But like so, like now, if you understand the negativity bias in the brain is built in for self-preservation, self-survival. Like, like now, like, oh, understand what your brain's doing. And then maybe like not, maybe I should really track all the good things because if I track all the good things, now I have someone to measure and look at all the bad things. And then maybe at the end of the year, you have two lists and like good and bad. And like, oh, it was a pretty good year. Like uh, that kind uh, of thing. I, I, I like the system. I'm, I'm a fan. I, I, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? You don't have to do it every day, but do it. Let's do it twice a week. I know saying that week that was supposedly bad. You look back and say, oh my God. It is an amazing list. It yeah. is, I had a great day. You know, my belief is, and, and I'm very, I believe in God a lot. You know, it's kind of funny. When I ask God, what do I want in my life? I said, make my children understand and follow you or follow God and give them the wisdom to tell what is good and what is bad. And that's what I ask. I don't ask for anything else because I think I have a lot of millionaires and billionaires in my practice. A lot of them are not happy, and they have all the money in the world, yeah. but they're not happy at all. And it's like, you have to look. I'm going to give you the best sample of this. Just when I was starting, I remember graduating from residency. I had a patient. I mean, they're not my patients anymore. They only came for one time. Ohio State sent me a patient that the wife, or they sent me this lady, and she had pancreatic cancer. And the guy was a pastor for a massive church in Ohio. And when I sat down in the room with them, this guy went to tell me how he doesn't pray anymore, how God betrayed him, how God didn't exist, all these things. And I was, wow, you know, and he told me all these things and his wife was there actually smiling and she was dying of pancreatic cancer. And then when I talked to her, I asked her, what's been going on with your life? She said, well, I've been married 54, 58 years. Huh. We have three wonderful children. We have nine grandkids. My life has been absolutely amazing. Yeah. I know I'm sick. I know I got to go. And I looked at him and I said, wow, you left God because they give you 58 great years, but the last six months of your life have been rough. Wow. Do, you know what the guy did? He got up, grabbed his wife, said, we're getting the hell out of here. He left. Huh. He didn't say anything to me. But like, but like again, like the truth hurts sometimes to, to that extent. But it's also like I mean, like well, that was a perfect yeah, example like, right there. Yeah, but you like you also like the 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 test of faith is incredible too. But like that's the story of Cain and Abel too. Like it, it, God favorites one or the other, how, however you view fate or faith and those kind of things. Like, and because he loves Abel more than Cain, Cain goes on this destructive pattern. But Besides the point, like, I, yeah, I, I like that. I like that concept a lot. Just the understanding of gratitude, and like, I haven't, I haven't listened to it yet. But Huberman uh, Labs, he's he's this uh, scientist out of um, Stanford's been doing. He's been bringing a lot of the science of like the blue light, the cold exposure, yes. like very. And he's uh, breaking down. He's one of my favorite podcasts right now. But I haven't listened to the gratitude one yet. But it looks like there's some like tangible benefits to gratitude from like brain structure and like oh, hormone levels yeah also one thing that and i haven't talked about this either 
Brian, some people learn more visualize, some people learn better with talking. Yeah. When you start writing things, for some reason affects your brain different than not writing them. Yeah. Like I can say, I'm going to do this, but if you write it, it is like you can memorize scenes better when you write them down. Have yeah. you noticed that? No, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, like even like when I, when I do these little book reports for the podcast and thing, like I, I underline, I go, I read the book, yes. I underline everything. And then I go back and like, it's not that I write all the underlines down. I even like write the context down. So I end up with like these 15 page book reports, but like the writing, I retain it. And then like, the same thing, like I've seen some numbers behind like actually writing down your goals versus like saying your goals and those kind of things. Like it just, it's, if you're saying your goals, writing goals is better than not. Yeah, guaranteed. Them. Yeah. Now they study better on a computer. They can read the computer better. Or they can yeah. look at an iPad. Yeah, I can't I, stand I, it. I can't yeah. stand it. I got to look at the book. I got to feel the crispy of the pages. Yeah. I got to look, oh shit, I have, I have, I can look at the thickness of the book. Yeah, I got to, I got to, yeah, I got this much laughter, like, <laughs> yeah. but I got to, I got to underline. I can't like, I can't, I'm not going to highlight and underline or like do the, yes. the highlight and the, I hate it. But anyways, <laughs> that's just two old guys talking. now. Yeah. And it's better just to write a little note next to the paragraph. Okay. You know, Puerto Ricans are better than, than Brian. So <laughs> Puerto Ricans are better, you know? Yeah. You, you can say that, but I mean, I'm telling you, when I wrote it, it became actually, it affected the brain different and it gave me, and it's an easy thing to do. Just tell yourself, I'm going to write five things every other day or every Monday or Tuesday or whatever but that I'm thankful for. And when you start writing that down, all of a sudden those Bad days are like, man, I only have one bad, one bad day this week. Yeah. Or I people dread, for example, most heart attacks happen Monday mornings between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Why? Because you're going to work. Yeah. You, you you took the break on the weekend. You had a good time, but now you got to deal with the stress of going to work. Another, yeah. another interesting time is like right after daylight saving switch too. That's crazy. Yes. That, that blows my mind that that, that well, spike is so high. Well, yeah. think about it, but it's, it's pretty obvious. But now I'm saying is, you know, why? It's because those people are thinking... I'm going to have a bad day. I'm going to have, they're already going in, in a negative state of mind to a place that they shouldn't go. Yeah. Everything else. Or can I create difficulty or can I make it easy? And when you ask me an easy way to relax, absolutely, I'm thankful today. God gave me this or yeah. blah, blah, blah. But you know, I, it, the, the, the lady that was dying of pancreatic cancer, like that level of gratitude and appreciation is, is like unparalleled. So like that actually, like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, uh, The Guardian. Um, it's no. Ashton Kutcher is like this uh, National Guard uh, scuba sa like saver. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said Coast Guard. Coast Guard, yeah. Sorry, yes. whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, but 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 so but there's a there's this bit. A lifeguard to a Coast Guard. Yes, yeah, so, same yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> swim club, <laughs> yeah. Pacific Ocean, same difference. Uh, but uh, the there's this bit in the show. This lady bartender, um, she's talking to Kevin Costner, the instructor. And she's basically like, they're like basically complaining about being mm. old kind of concept. <laughs> and he, she hits him with like the, like my knees may hurt, but like, it's because I walked up to the stairs of the person I loved for this many years. Like, um, like my, my, I have wrinkles on my skin, pop, probably glycogen deficiency <laughs> or glycine <laughs> deficiency. deficiency. <laughs> but, um, but she, cause I, she goes, I'd laid under like millions of suns or like all these things. And just like, it shows like the gratitude, like, like, she, like everything she had is earned. Yes. And if you get the ability of, 58 years of marriage or these type of things like be grateful like, if you get the opportunity in the nfl even if it's for one snap like and like be grateful like there's different there's just different there's always a perspective shift and like when i when i get to i'm in the coaching world now and like changing a guy's perspective about how he is on the mound like there's micro ways to look at it because a lot of people get caught in like this very that that pitch was bad like how do i make the next pitch not be bad and then it just turns into a spiral and then now it's like oh let's let's step back like let's look at this from 10,000 feet. Oh, I'm a D1 pitcher on scholarship that has all these pitches, this velocity, this spin rate, all these things. Like, like I'm actually in a, a good position. Like one bad pitch shouldn't cripple me. So like, it just, it's perspective shifting. And, I, and I'm a big fan of that. And then we'll, we'll wrap it up here with the last question <laughs> just because <laughs> well, guys, okay, we'll go again. Go well, ahead. yeah, every time we're going to go for two hours, it's just, it's just, it's done and <laughs> said already. But, um, the, the last question was, uh, and on the previous podcast, we mentioned the time under tension training. Um, kind of, can you walk through the benefits? Yeah, actually, the I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you cases because that way you can see it better. Now, time under tension was developed by, again, by a guy named Ian Keane. He was the first one that wrote about this technique in 1986. I thought I have the research paper. Why do you remember so 
Well, because it, it was an awakening for me. And let me give you why this is, it was a huge deal. So I'm going to take a guy that takes 100 pounds, and I'm going to say this. You're going to, I'm going to use an easy exercise so everybody can see it. I'm going to do curls. I'm going to do 100 pounds. Easy for me to calculate curls. <laughs> and I do 100 pounds, 10 reps, right? And I do it like this. Now, I can do my 100 reps or my 10 reps, excuse me, with 100 pounds, and I do it this way, and I take two seconds. One second, one second, one second. So that, that set lasts me 20 seconds because I use 10 reps with 100 pounds. Now, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to take that same poundage, but instead of going fast like this, I'm going to take three seconds down and two seconds up. Now my repetition cost me five seconds, so that set, last, set lasted 50 seconds, which is much higher. People that are massive, stronger, gigantic size, and I'm not talking now about testosterone, I'm not talking about steroids. If you guys looked at it, there were slaves in history that were massive, and those people had a massive amount of time under tension mm. of whatever they were doing. If they were pushing the wheel, so they were pushing the stone to the, those people had to stay there. That wheel was so heavy, they couldn't push it fast. They had to push a heavy weight how? Slow. Slow. I'm not talking about speed training. I'm not talking about any, I'm talking specific time under tension. So I have a rule that I, and this is a made up rule. I don't know if this is true or not. Time under tension. If you want to gain size, you want to make sure that that set lasts 52 seconds or more. Why 52 seconds? Because I took a guy that wasn't gaining size and I did the weight. I did everything. I looked at it and every set I made it last 52 seconds. And I noted this guy using the same amount of weight, yeah. gain size. He gained size he was using the same amount now note that i'm not taking our rest seconds in between sets no that i'm not taking because time on the tension can also say okay i'm gonna do, i'm gonna do 10 sets of one for example so i'm gonna do five seconds up five seconds down so 10 second rep but i'm only i'm gonna only rest 10 seconds between repetition which will make that very long but time on the tension is a huge proponent for size do you want to get bigger and stronger time under tension will absolutely help you do that. Now, when you use time under tension, you also have a less chance of getting hurt because now you're not moving at super high speeds, right? You're not ripping them at the muscles and the yeah, tendons. And you're stuff, not yeah. ripping it. And also, you can use heavy weights because now that 100 pounds that I was using, yeah. three seconds or two seconds, I'm not going to be able to do my 10 repetitions. Yeah. And so, 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 oh, cool. Cause so this person specifically asking for like lat and shoulder time under tension stuff. Great. Yeah. So, like, like a great example that Doc uses a lot. Um, like, he'll ask, like, when he speaks to crowds and stuff, I've been at a few of the, the presentations, mm -hmm. but like, Oh, like you're pretty strong and I like push on the shoulders and stuff like that. And, and like oh, gr grab a weight you can do a, a lateral raise with and then you, then you have them and you have them hold it and instead of like doing a rep, you have them hold it or like go under control and they burn out very fast. So I invented a system called the ischemic strength system. And that's when you take, so I'm going to, I'm going to use your, your position lateral raises. So instead of going both at the same time, okay, I'm going to hold my left arm or my right arm, excuse me, and I'm going to do my set. I might do my two seconds up, yeah. my two seconds down, and I'm going to do one, two, one, two. But E2 me, I'm going to do 10, so two seconds, it's going to be 20 seconds. Now, this arm is already holding it for 20 seconds. Now I'm going to hold it off. Now I'm going to go ahead and do 20 seconds here again. Now this arm is kind of beat because I've been holding it. Now it's a 40 second set. Yeah. Even though you didn't, you know, yeah. you were not going for time on the tension. That's a way to gain time on the tension right there. That way also will make you way stronger because now you're using an isometric component that will use time under tension that will use in reps. I also developed a system called the cluster set system. Now I need to answer that guy question out because I like that question. Yeah. Now I'm assuming this guy, when people complain on the back, they mean, oh, my back is not big enough, not thick enough. Yeah. And that's the biggest complaint. One thing that I want to tell you is I want you to do, and, and remember Brian, when we used to do five minutes of, pull-ups to see yeah, who yeah. can do the most. So this was a way of time under tension we, de we, de we decided to do here. We have a group of eight guys, so one with a bunch of ego, you know, yeah. like Brian Peters yeah. and Zach Borne, <laughs> yeah. all these football guys, right? Of course, I'm not as heavy as they are, and the heavier you are, the harder to do pull-ups. But you're doing your sets. You're doing the, as much reps as you can. Now, what I will do is, once you do all the reps you can, I want you to come up on that bar, jump up, and you want to hold it there as long as you can. 
And the way that I used to think about it was, man, I'm going to hold it here and there's sharks under me. I got to survive. And when you can only hold it, you think you can hold it for 10 seconds, you can now hold it for 20 seconds. Your, ba your back is going to explode. So let me repeat this. So let's suppose you can do 15 reps and they're fast. You say, oh, I can do 15 reps fast. And correct repetition. You go do your 15 reps. Now, you know you can do that 16 rep, but instead of going down, you're going to keep it up there. You're going to hold it as long as you can. You should hold it for at least 17 seconds. Why 17 seconds? Because that's what I found that it makes a difference. Then you back, you can, you can barely reach your arm when you're done with this. And you hold it there, and you do two sets only of that, it will kill you. Yeah, for, for those of you listening, he's like the, the hold at the top is what he's talking about, like where your chin's above the bar. Yes, I'm, and, and you and, have to keep it there. And your lats are in full contraction. Yes, yeah. and you have to do it. Now, that's one way. Now, another way is to do what, is, uh, what I call a cluster set. And a cluster set for me is different than the cluster sets for bodybuilding. When I'm talking about cluster sets, I mean, okay, for example, I'm going to give you, I'm going to take push-ups here to make it easy. So you can do 30 push-ups in a row, right? So you do one, two, three, four. I need my 30 push-up. Then I rest for the next set. Now, I want to do a little bit different. I'd like to develop systems. So in your body, you have the CP system and the ATP system and the lactic system. The one that makes you faster is the CP system or the ATP system. That's what you use. What are you referring we, to the CP system? Creatine sorry? phosphate oh, and yeah, ATP. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, my fault. So creatine uh, phosphate, I knew, I knew ATP, ATP. But yeah. Okay, that's when you're running 100 meters, that's what you use. Yeah. So now I'm going to develop that, but I'm going to develop a different. So we're going to do push-ups. So we're going to go in the push-up position. So you're going to do eight repetitions. And you're going to tell me, anybody can do eight repetitions, but you're going to do it my way. And you measure, by the way, I'm going to do I'm going to do eight repetitions. So you do your repetition, your way. See how many minutes it gets. It might take you eight seconds. One, you're going to do one. And you stay on your on your on your position of push up. Top of the push up, yeah. And you count to six to eight seconds. You don't get once you count to eight seconds, then you go two. So you do one, two, eight seconds again. You stay there. Now I'm gonna do three. My third repetition. One, two, three. So you see what I'm saying? You're getting so the you, time and attention at the you're top. You're getting time on the tension, you're getting six to eight seconds of rest which allow your cp atp to recover basically but you're doing it but you're going to be wiped out because it's going to take you three and a half minutes to do eight repetitions you're not doing eight repetition you got to add one plus two you're doing 32 repetitions got it which is brutal with, with exceeding that 53 second window as well so the, the, for people listening it's a, they're burners and you can do them on all exercises like you can do yes you can do you, anywhere you, you can do one squat rest six to eight seconds two well, holding the weight Holding the weight at the top, like on on pull ups, um, you can do the. the I, I tried the whole. No. I, I I am really good at pull ups. And Brian knows, shit. When I'm holding on the top, like I do one repetition on the top. I the most I ever done is six repetitions, which is savage. Like if, if any, like if you're you if try you, it, if, you, if you're holding under contract, it's, it's easier at the top of a squat to hold the weight. Oh yeah, it's easier at the top of a push up to stay in a top position or whatever tabletop position. But like the top of a pull up are the hardest ones I've yes, done. Yes, well. so if you do one repetition. One, two, three, yeah, okay. four, five, six. Yeah. When you're up there, what one, two, three, four, five, saying? six. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you, then you start counting. I, I don't know. If, yeah. I don't know if I ever made it to six seconds doing six. Yeah. Six seconds. I, I did made it. To, I did. I did. I didn't finish my six rep. I only did three reps on the six. Six yeah. repetition, which it, it was but, very. You try it and you yeah, tell me why. Which is and, and he like to answer like to answer. The, oh, the, what is it? I want to do this for the podcast. If you write Brian, if you do this, and you're gonna do the cluster set doing pull ups, right? And I'm talking about okay, watch me. One right, hold it for six seconds. Two, one, two, hold it for six seconds. At the top, yeah. One, two, three. Hold it for six seconds. If you can, if you can do eight or if you can do, if you can do seven, I will give you a free book that you guys will love. I'll send it yeah, to Brian. Yeah, yeah. And Brian will what? do it. You guys do send the email, send the question, see who can do it. I and I will, I'll yeah. give you actually. I'll, I'll, th I'll throw a cash for. I'll, 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 I'll throw a hundred. I'll throw a hundred bucks on there too. People, we talk about the fat, uh, the fat stuff like that. One of the best books was written by a guy, Maro Di Pasquale, which is a great friend of mine, and I will send. I will send you two books, The Radical Diet and the Anabolic Diet. For whoever, but I need to, 
Don't come and tell me that you did it without a video. Yeah, for sure. You, Guaranteed. We, we need to see this. So, yeah, I'll, th I'll throw 100 well, on that, so too. He I, I, just, I just know how hard it is. And, like, it's so, it's <laughs> well, so I went, well, these people, I go, oh, I'm strong. I can do it. Now, the heavier that you are, yeah, the, the, the harder, harder it is. Yeah, so be so, aware of that. So I, I guess, I, so I have a curious, we'll end it now after this, but <laughs> I, I have a curious question yeah. in the, um, the time under tension realm because, like, it's there's kind of like this lactic acid, acid threshold and then you have... Because like when I hear the the CP and the ATP, like I I have a loose understanding of all this, but um, the 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 longer oxygen's available in a cell, the more aerobic it can, it can stay. Correct. So like, which which leads so like I th I think the number is thirty two ATP versus four when it's uh, anab or uh, anaerobic. Well, that's good. Well, when when you start to exercise without, it's called the oxygen debt. The body has to pay oxygen debt to burn fat. You always require oxygen. Yeah. Okay. That's why. That's why you can continually do things for a long time when you're using oxygen because you can burn the fat. You cannot yeah. burn fat without oxygen. So what you do, everybody is different on that. The oxygen that can be four seconds, can be twelve seconds to yeah. somebody is different. We do not know what what you can do. So so rule between four and eight seconds. Let's put it that way. It would okay. be a better rule. Now, what is your question? I guess my, my so my question with the lactic acid threshold, it's kind of like running a four hundred meter dash. Okay. So when you run a four hundred meter dash, like everybody pretty much burns out around three hundred. Yes. And so that usually occurs around like the forty forty five second, depending on how fast you are, um, window. Like so, I kind of view that as like an aerobic, like max effort aerobic lactic acid uh, threshold. Yes. So an anaerobic lactic. Yeah, so anaerobic, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, but then, like, I so I kind of see a relationship there between like your fifty-three second and that time window because I do a lot of exercises that flirt with that window and they're definitely harder at that window. So, like, I assume that's like the lack of oxygen availability at that point because you've already you've already worked for forty-five to fifty-three seconds. So that is that why that also is that probably why a lot of these yes. things and get amplified and like the strength and the size yes, absolutely. show absolutely now yeah you develop in capillaries you have to develop another thing that this guy Ian King did and there's a website called Ian and I'm not making any money I'm just telling you how good he is Ian King has Ian, Ian King Sports Academy or something like that it's it's, it's, it's King right K I N G oh like, it is King it's King, King. King. Like okay King. yeah just and and uh, I forgot King La, King just look it up. Uh, I'll, I'll find e it and put it in the show notes, yeah. Okay, and here is this guy discuss all kind of things. For example, he says to develop capillary systems, you require extreme high repetitions between 50 to 100, okay. which will give you, let's suppose you even you take one second, which is impossible. Yeah. It's going to take you 50 seconds to do. Which, yeah. you know, so, so is this in one sitting or is this like broken up into one sets? One sitting. Okay, okay. Okay. So I'm going to sit there. I'm going to do 50 reps. That is a way to do time on the tension, very light way. But at that time, you're using speed at the same time. So you can't want your tendons and ligaments because yeah. you're going really fast, right? But uh, it's not going to do. There you develop your nervous system. There you develop your capillary system. You okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes because sense. Now, I have between... 12 to four between 12 to 20 which were most bodybuilding hand yeah that's what the repetition yeah, yeah, the, the, their hypertrophy the, kind yes, of stops there that's yeah. sarcolemma okay and between six to eight give you the hypertrophy okay and between two to three reps there's two there's two windows here the fast two to three very light very fast to develop yeah. speed or two to three very very heavy to very develop slow, the, yeah. the strength, yeah, strength right yeah. right and the best way to explain this, I have two guys that can bench 400 pounds. They're both strong because you can bench 400 pounds. So watch this. Watch the guy A. Uh, for those of you listening, Serrano's doing a very slow bench, bench pressure. Press, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, okay. So this guy Slow bench, down and slow so, up. Oh, yeah. He can move it, but he's moving now. Now, the other guy cannot bench more than four, none, Neither one. They both bench press 400, but watch this guy. He comes fast. So one guy, they're equally stronger, but they don't have the same power. Yeah. Got it? So be aware of that, those things. Power and strength are not the same. So when you are doing time under tension, you develop your strength, but your power is not Yeah, there. being developed, yeah. Yes, that is the only difference. But so, now... So, so, so if you're an athlete... Pro you like, you want to do both. Yeah, you, you want to do both. You, and you, but you also... And if you're not, if you're really just going for size, strength, yes. yeah, all day, every day. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. So power is... 
redundant because your power you can only do for a short amount of time. But a strength you can do it continuously. Yeah. So at the end of the day, do I be more more powerful or more stronger? I think I prefer to be stronger. If you're gonna fight me or wrestle me, you might have the power. If you don't get that one punch in and we go at it, the guy that has the strongest yeah. is gonna beat you. Because he can last longer, he can move longer, he can hold you for longer. Like I gotta I gotta say a super example here. Uh, the world champion Jiu Jitsu middleweight is a guy named Vitor. And I sent Brian <laughs> <laughs> Brian Peters to Vitor. Okay, Vitor weighs maybe 180 wet. He, right? he, yeah, he's a he's a black belt, he's a stud, <laughs> but he, he was coaching me in Jiu Jitsu, yeah. So he called me and said, Why do you send me Brian? I said, Oh, well, Brian said he wants to be the best. And you know, so he comes that day to me and said, You need to give me dinner. I said, Why? My goodness. I I am way be- I can kick his ass, right? Because of course he's yeah, the best it, at the it's best. A, it's a skill, yeah. But he said for me to be able to bend him or to hold him or to do something to him, I couldn't. I have to use his strength on my on my advantage because there was no way I can beat this guy. He said I had him on an arm lock. He was able to break the arm lock because he was much stronger than i am yeah brian was able to hold it there yeah, longer a, a lot of ex-athletes can transition pretty well because strength is such an yes, advantage but, in the but sport but vito had the power because he can move quicker yeah i'll agree got so, it he oh, can yeah. move quicker on his technique i'll, I'll, I'll agree yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but brian yeah. he, he said to be brian it's gonna be really hard because even a choke brian can grab his arms and open them up which that's the whole advantage of power and strength yeah but that's given which idea. is dynamite but that we'll, we'll wrap it up there appreciate you doc the q a i'm I, hopefully the people that got all their questions answered are i want to see what happened to the contest yeah you need to let me know because i want to laugh my i want to see all the bullshit of, oh i i did a 10 times shit i want to see it well i'm, I'm gonna try it again myself tomorrow morning <laughs> and, and see what and see you what gotta happens. text me tomorrow yeah, yeah. morning I'll, 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 I'll get i'll get somebody to video it yeah <laughs> okay. yeah that's awesome thank I'll, you guys I'll, merry christmas yeah appreciate you doc <laughs> bye-bye <laughs>